little bit today about Google Classroom and setting up a Google Classroom. Now, if you already have Google Classrooms from last year, I wanted to show you something really quickly. In your Google Classrooms from previous years or past last year, you would just go to your Google Classrooms, click on the three dots, and archive that class and you'll want to go ahead and archive. I never delete a class in case I want to pull from something at a later time. Now, what I want you to make sure that you do to sign in is go to your email and from your emails, what you'll do is go ahead, go to email, go to your nine squares, click on Google Classroom and from Google Classroom, you'll go right back to that page with all of your classes this time you'll go to the right top corner and you're going to create a class. Create class. Now, when you type in your class name, I usually name my class based on my last name and the period. So I'll name this Simpson period one and then I name it by the section that it is. So I'll name it by the grade and then the class that it is. So this class is advanced accelerated science. I don't put in the subject or the room number, but you can if you want to. Then I'll create the class. What it will automatically do is generate a, a header at the top of your Google Classroom and you'll see that up here. You can choose to keep that header if you wish or you can change your header based on your subject. So I'm going to choose math and science and I can choose a different header. If I wanted to upload a photo, I will tell you this, you can upload a JPEG, but Google has set it in the header. It is coded right now to kind of discolor your, your header a little bit because of any student that struggles with stimulation issues. And so I've noticed that any color that I put as a header, what it automatically does is it changes and darkens that color so it might frustrate you a little bit. So I recommend trying it out before you use it um, or definitely before purchasing any because no, that color will always change. The default, the themes that they already have for you are great. The next thing that I would encourage you to do is go ahead, take a look at your stream, your classwork, people, and grades, but go up, come all the way over to your tools and want to go ahead and click on that gear because there are some things in the class settings that we want to go ahead and change. If you want to type in anything about your class description, you most definitely can. But here are some things that are super important to look at to change. The first thing, if you have a younger grade and you do not want students to be able to post and comment, you can click that and you can change where students can only comment or teachers can be the only ones to post and comment. Some people would choose it for students to only be allowed to comment, never be able to create their own post. Uh, that's totally up to you. In an older class, you may allow them to post and comment, but again, that is at teacher discretion, and you can edit and change that at any time. One very important drop down is right here where it says classwork on the stream. I always change this to hide notifications because all classwork, I want to only show up in classwork. The stream I save for very important information and I only want classwork to show up in the classwork section. So I never want that to double post in the stream. It will get lost. So I recommend everyone hide notifications here. I don't show deleted items. The next thing, this is new. I have set all of my classes to be able to get Guardian Summary. So I've clicked that on to be able to get the Guardian Summary. So you'll see that right here. Um, Guardian Summaries, I want them to be able to receive summaries each week on students, what they're missing, their grades that have been posted, and upcoming assignments. Next, I feel like this is very important. I click Generate a Meet link. And then that way it's turned on. So specifically for this class, first period, they have their own Google Meet link and any student and I can meet at any time class-wide, a group of students, they can meet with me in Google Meets now just by clicking on the icon in the classwork section or that Google Meet link that we'll now see 
up in the header of Google Classroom and that just made it visible to all students. The last piece that we want to look at is our grade calculation. I do want students to be able to see their grade by weights. I want them to go ahead and be, see an overall grade once those weighted grades are calculated and then for the grade book for the students to see I want to put in two graded categories. One is their products and that is going to be 80%. That's anything that they produce, assessments, projects for science, that would be their lab. And then I'm going to add another category anytime they are uh, practicing and that would be whether it be vocabulary, whether that be an exit ticket, Anytime we're practicing to um, prepare for mastery, that would be considered in that 20%. Any prep work, that would be my 80-20 for an overall. And I'm going to go ahead now and save all of that information to set up in my settings. Now you can see right here, our meet link is set. The next thing I want you to take notice of is I can now share this class code um, for students. This is how they can join or I can simply invite students by going over to people. And once I have, this is how you are all invited to Google Classroom. What I can do now is once they have my class list, I can come straight in here and type in a student's name. And so let's say that the student that was gonna be in this class is Madison Arthur. And so I can come and find her name right here. I wanna make sure that I choose their .net. So there's Maddie Arthur and what I would do would be to click on her name and then you would invite. To do that, you are gonna have to do individually every student in that classroom. And you can also um, post that class code, but I highly recommend that you invite every, every single student to your class, even though it takes time. It is the easiest way to get the most amount of students the fastest. Now back to stream. Again, this is where I post any important um, information for students. This would be the best place to post your office hours and introduction to yourself of yourself and um, information you want your students to see right away. And classwork is where we begin to build your modules and you do that by clicking, oh here's your meet right here to any student. You and your students can click on meet to join Google Meets. Again, here is your own personal Google Calendar that you can click on. And right here, the Google Class Drive folder, huge for you because you can click on that Class Drive folder and once students have joined your class, that's where all of their work will be saved. So that is very important to look back to. So here are your icons again, um, your assignments. Go ahead when you, here's your icons, your assignments what a quiz looks like if you want to post a discussion question. But this material is where you will be um, putting all of your resources for the week. And um, then beyond that, your assignment would be with the clipboard. So I highly recommend that you set this up as a module. And what you want to do is create a topic. And so your topic might be called module one and then anything below module one would be where you would go ahead and set up. Now you can create that material from there and everything you need for module one would be placed under your, um, your module. So you wanna go ahead and make sure that you click module one. At this time, you could go ahead and if you know that you're teaching two sixth grade classes, you can make sure that every single group at the same time, you send that out to all of your classes at one time. Just a little helpful hint there. And here's where you would add from your Google Drive those specific type of um, materials that you're adding in. I just wanna make sure that you know this too. When you add an assignment, you don't really wanna add any materials to it because when you give specifically an assignment, it makes it a lot easier to create a copy for each student or um, post a Google form and to be able to grade it automatically right there if there's nothing attached to it, which is a huge piece of why I always put materials all in one at the top and have the students go through that first. So 
here's just some helpful hints for Google Classroom. The last thing I want to show you is the grade book where all of the grades will be posted at one time. Um, last helpful hint for you is this little, very cool little um, tab at the top that's called To Review. And To Review would show you a quick look at all of your classes all at one time that shows you if there's anything at all that needs to be reviewed. So right here I see that in our professional development class there's one assignment that's been turned in 14 have been graded and there's 14 people who still need to work on it. Um, you can tell I'm pretty OCD, so anything that I need to grade, I usually like to stay at zero. There's um, some people who have 16 people who created a class that they need to be graded and um, everything else is looking pretty good. So uh, anyways, for all of you as you're having multiple classes, that to review button is a big help to kind of get a glimpse at what you need to be doing. So I'm hoping that this is helpful. I know it's quick, quick tutorial, but um, hopefully it will be of help to you as you're starting out with your Google Classroom. All right, thanks so much.